Any fish farming facility requires constant uninterrupted water circulation. After all, in recirculating aquaculture systems, water is reused up to 300 times. That means you need to lift this water 300 times so it can pass through the tanks again, through the water treatment system again, and once more you lift it before it is finally discharged into the sewer. As a rule, pumps are used to accomplish this task. Hello everyone, my name is Anton Pelchar. I'm an engineer and I've been building fish farms for over 10 years. What if I told you that pumps aren't the only devices you can use to lift water? Today we're going to talk about airlifts. Be sure to watch this video until the end, because today I'll tell you what an airlift is, how it works, its pros and cons compared to pumps, how to select one, and how to integrate it into a recirculating aquaculture system. Make sure to watch this video all the way through, give us a thumbs up, and let's get started. So, let's start by taking a closer look at the different ways you can lift or transfer water. The first and most classic method is using pumps. Basically, a pump consists of an electric motor and a special impeller that creates a vacuum on one side of the pipeline and pressure on the other. In other words, it moves water from one place to another. I think almost everyone uses pumps, whether it's at home, in the garden or for irrigation, whatever the case may be. Pumps are used to boost water pressure into your apartment. Pumps are used everywhere. And in recirculating aquaculture systems, pumps are also used very, very widely. In fact, the Circulation in probably 90% of modern commercial fish farms is based on pumps as a primary method. Now, let's talk about airlifts. What kind of interesting thing is this anyway? In this case, air is what lifts the water. Actually, this technology is probably about 200 years old. It's mainly used in oil extraction, in wastewater treatment, and for lifting water from wells. So, uh, airlifts, you can look them up online, are actually quite a common device. They're also used in aquaculture. And let's figure out what exactly it does here on fish farms. By the way, on this farm where I'm standing right now, this airlift is being used. On RAS farms, it's used for water circulation. That is, to provide that very circulation and to reuse the water in the RAS system up to 300 times, but specifically in cases where you need to lift water to a minimal height and with a high flow rate. That's where the airlift is a great thing. How does an airlift actually work? Basically, compressed air is supplied through a pipe to a certain depth. At this depth, it comes out of perforated pipes and rises upward. As it rises, it creates a certain vacuum. In this way, water from another part of the channel pushes this section upward. So essentially, it starts the circulation process. How does this work on fish farms? That is, where is it used? It's used where you need to pump a large amount of water to a minimal height. Well, what do we mean by minimal? Ideally, 20 or 30 centimeters. At most, well, 50 or 70, it's not used for more than that. So, it's used where the system has minimal loss of water level. Let's talk about where an airlift is not suitable. Uh, that is, where it can't be used on RS fish farms. It can't be used to supply water to pressurized oxygenators. So, for example, you won't be able to use an airlift to supply water into a cone. Even with a low pressure oxygenator, you also can't supply water with an airlift. It is not used where you need to lift water more than 70 centimeters, well, maybe up to a meter, but even at a meter it's already not used. Anywhere above 70 centimeters of lift, the airlift becomes almost a useless device. You can't use it to wash a drum filter, and in general, wherever you need to lift water more than 70 centimeters or provide pressure, you can just forget about the airlift. Let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the airlift. Well, let's start with the advantages. The first advantage, and what I like about it, it's very simple. So, you have a compressor. Yes, the compressor can break down, of course, but the compressor is installed separately. You don't need to climb in somewhere to service it. It stands separately in the compressor room, just like it's done here. At the same time, the airlift itself doesn't have any electrical equipment. So, there are just pipes, a partition, basically nothing else. And the air that is supplied uh, to the diffusers, that's it. And that's why the airlift is very simple. There's really nothing there that can break. Its second major advantage is that it additionally saturates the water with oxygen. So, for example, in a system like this, where there aren't that many fish and pure oxygen isn't needed, the airlift easily serves as a device that saturates the water with oxygen. The airlift provides water degassing, that is, since a large amount of compressed air is supplied to the airlift, there is significant bubbling inside the device, and as a result, carbon dioxide is vented into the atmosphere one way or another. So, the airlift both saturates the water with oxygen and also ensures degassing. And its last major advantage is that a single compressor can essentially be used for several devices. In other words, you can even use one compressor for aerating the biofilter for the airlift and for purging the sinking filter. So if you install one rotary blower and set up a backup for it, you can use it for everything. Here, several blowers are used. 
Here everything is a bit separated, but nevertheless, if needed, you can simplify the system and save money by using just one blower for essentially all tasks. Let's talk about the disadvantages of the airlift. I've already mentioned some of them. There are three main disadvantages. The first is the inability to lift water to a great height. That is anything over 50 or 70 centimeters. An airlift in such systems becomes useless. The second is the inability to create pressure. In other words, the airlift simply lifts water, but it doesn't generate pressure. And the third serious disadvantage is its low efficiency. So, in order to pump water using an airlift, you need quite a lot of electricity, which will be consumed by the compressor. And sometimes it's easier to just install, say, a low-pressure propeller pump and use it for circulation. So we've covered it, how an airlift works, its advantages and disadvantages. Now let's figure out how to actually select one if you want to integrate it into your system. This is actually a very interesting topic. When I first dealt with selecting an airlift, by the way, it was at this very farm, I went through a huge amount of information. I tried to find the principles for calculating an airlift, specifically for a channel farm, because everything I found online was just about a tube inside a tube. It was all about lifting water from a well, so the input data and calculations provided didn't fit these particular tasks. I searched everywhere I could, but I couldn't find any calculated figures. So I lost my patience, gave up on all that, went out and collected real data from other farms that use this kind of airlift and simply identified certain patterns. If you follow them, everything will work perfectly. That's exactly what I did, because finding any open calculations for airlifts in aquaculture farms just wasn't possible for me, even though I'm actually very good at searching. Now let's talk about these key data points. The total depth of the entire chamber, it's like a shaft that's made for the airlift. So you have channels of a certain depth, but the airlift is made much deeper. This shaft, its total depth, I make it three and a half meters. Out of that, half a meter is a dry reserve and three meters is the water level. At a depth of half a meter from the bottom, the airlift diffusers are located. So above the diffusers, there is a two and a half meter column of water. This chamber is divided by a vertical partition, which also stops half a meter short of the bottom. Thus, by supplying air to the diffusers, which are located in the outlet chamber, we draw water from under the partition from the chamber that needs to have water pumped out. Next is the air to water ratio. I use a one to one ratio, but you can also increase it with a margin up to one and a half to one. What does this mean? If we need to pump 1000 cubic meters of water per hour, we need to supply at least 1000 cubic meters of air per hour to this airlift, or you can increase it up to one and a half thousand. Of course, this requires installing a frequency converter on the compressor so you can adjust the frequency and control the water flow the type of blower and the pressure at the operating point. For an airlift, I do not recommend using vortex blowers. I recommend installing a rotary compressor. It always provides stable pressure regardless of flow rate and resistance. The rotary compressor should have a pressure at least half a meter higher than your water column. So if your water column is two and a half meters above the diffusers, you need to add at least another half meter to the compressor pressure, which gives us three meters of pressure. That's if it's located nearby. If it's located farther away, I would recommend three and a half meters. So what does three and a half meters mean? That's 0.35 bar of compressor pressure. And accordingly, as for the flow rate, as I already mentioned, the ratio is from one to one up to one and a half to one. And once again, what do you need to make this airlift? You need a concrete shaft into which on one side, a channel will enter from which you need to pump water. And on the other side, a channel into which you need to pump the water. The concrete shaft is divided in half by a semi-submerged partition that stops about half a meter above the bottom. The water depth in the airlift is three meters. We install perforated pipes at a depth of two and a half meters and connect them to a pipeline from the compressor. The compressor should be rotary and must provide at least half a meter or better yet, a meter more pressure than the height of your water column. That's it, your airlift is ready. Naturally, we set up a control system for this compressor, preferably install frequency converters and voila, your water pumping system is up and running. Well, that's basically everything regarding the airlift. I hope you found this helpful. If so, give this video a like and subscribe to my Telegram channel. This was Anton Pelcher with my channel about how to farm fish and make good money doing it. Bye.